Magandang gabi sa inyong lahat. Magandang gabi, Father. Malagayang Pasko at magoong baong, bagong taon. Mahal kita. Kile, kile. Okay, I use all my Tagalog words, okay? Those are all the, all the Tagalog words. It's almost here. It is almost here. Christmas is almost here. We are, the, we are in the final days of Advent. In our Simang Gabi Novina, it will end on Friday with a grand finale at St. Dominic in Bolingbrook. I love Advent. Who loves Advent? We all love Advent. And who loves the Simang Gabi? We all love the Simang Gabi, don't we? These nine nights, these nine nights of Advent Masses have been filled with great joy and anticipation for the wonderful solemnity of Christmas. And today's readings, today's readings, we have the highlight of the joy and the excitement we feel. The whole of the salvation history is accomplished in the plan that God had from the very beginning of time. God had this plan to help all of us, God's people, to get to heaven for our salvation. He wanted a savior to be born. And you know what? God's plan for salvation included this very, very story that we heard in the gospel. For it was God's plan, it was God's plan that the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mama Mary, would encounter the angel Gabriel, the angel of the Lord who tells Mama Mary, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. And he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. You know, Mary, her fear turns to faith. Mary's fear turns to faith. Because as soon as the Annunciation took place and the fullness of God was impregnated in her womb of Mary, she was filled with that grace because of her fiat when Mary says yes to the Lord God. You know, Mary's fear is overcome by her great faith when she says, let it be done to me according to your word. So think about this, church. Think about this. In our lives, we face so many fears. You know, who faces fears? I think we all face fears every single day. We have fears about our job and our livelihood. You know, will I have good employment? Will I have enough money to retire? Will my children, my grandchildren, you know, survive? Will they survive the devil and the evil culture that's trying to lure them away from God? Will our kids have a good future? Will my health be better? Will my health improve? You know, there are so, so many uncertainties and fears in life. And yet, we should not fear. We should never fear. If we follow the example of the Blessed Virgin Mary at the Annunciation, we should trust always in God's particular plan for each of us. And every one of us should just go with it. Go with God's plan. The Lord's plan is that we stay faithful to him and always say yes, like the Virgin Mary, to God's will. Now I want to share with you a story, people like my father Dindo stories, and this is a story that I wanted to share of when I was studying to be a priest, when I was in the seminary, as a seminarian, studying at Mundelein Seminary. This was probably around the year 2008, so it was a long time ago. I was able to study and make a pilgrimage in the Holy Land. And I was in the Holy Land for three whole months as part of my seminary studies. And during this time, I was really enjoying visiting all of the holy sites where Jesus was, uh, Galilee, you know, Bethlehem. But you, my, most, my most powerful experience of the whole pilgrimage happened in Nazareth in Nazareth, at the exact place where this gospel story that we just heard happened, the place of the Annunciation. And the Annunciation is a very powerful image in my heart, and I actually had a commissioned painting 
of the Annunciation painted in our narthex. So check that out later. It's a beautiful painting of when the angel Gabriel came to Mary. So in Nazareth, you know, going back to our pilgrimage, all the seminarians were given time to pray in the Church of the Annunciation of the Blessed Virgin Mary, which is a beautiful, beautiful basilica. And in that church, there was a holy sanctuary by the main altar. And by that main altar was a cave where the angel Gabriel actually appeared to Mary, where the actual Annunciation spot took place. It was in this cave. And this cave, you guys, was very guarded, okay? There was a cage, there was a fence that blocked everyone from going in, and it was completely locked. You know, you couldn't get actually into that cave where the Annunciation happened. That gate was locked. So we were allowed to pray, you know, inside the church all night long in those days. I'm not sure that's still possible. But we were inside that church, but not inside that cave. We needed to stay. Uh, I decided to do something kind of bold. I wanted to get locked in the church of the Annunciation. So when everyone went home to the hotel, Father Dindo stayed in the, in the church and was locked in. And I prayed and prayed and prayed. And it was pretty late at night, and no one was inside the church. When about 11 p.m., I'm praying, and I see, I want to get into that cave. I want to sneak into that cave. You know, I want to, like, pick the lock and get in there somehow. Okay, so I wanted to touch that ground where the Virgin Mary stood with the angel Gabriel. I wanted to be inside and where the Word of God became flesh and dwelled among us, right? That was the incarnation spot. So I was very fortunate. Father Dindo was very fortunate because one of the monks, a Franciscan monk, who was the custodian of the shrine, was from the Philippines, okay? So I had a connection with him. And we were talking a lot, and the Filipino priests were also Franciscan monks, and they were praying. So I pleaded with him, Sige na! Sige na! Let me in. Come let me in, please. Let me into that cave for just one minute, okay? They never let pilgrims in this cave because I was told by the monks that people were taking stones from the cave and stealing them, bringing them home, and that was becoming a problem. So this monk, he felt sorry, very sorry for this big, fat Filipino seminarian. <laughs> and he said, okay, okay, get in there. So I was, he unlocked the gate, and I was inside the cave praying on my knees on that very spot where the Annunciation took place. And the cave was very dark. Okay, imagine that. It was a very, very dark cave. But you know what? Even though it was so dark in there, there was, I was, it was not scary. I was not scared at all. It was just very peaceful and very quiet. And I began to imagine the Blessed Virgin Mary and what happened to her at the Annunciation. And you know what? I started crying. I started bawling. I couldn't help myself. I was sobbing. I couldn't, was overcome with so much emotions. Because this was the place where Mary said yes to God, where she said yes to being the mother. Imagine that, being the mother of God, and help God with his promise to save his people. I started to cry and cry and cry because, as a seminarian, I also was saying yes to God, to be his priest. And if it was God's will, I was saying yes, just like the Virgin Mary. Let it be done unto me according to your will, according to your word, O Lord. So I felt this amazing peace and joy that I was participating in God's plan with my own vocation as a priest of Jesus Christ. And my only desire was to be a good, holy priest and help people to get to heaven. That was my only desire, to help people grow in their faith and faith and hope and love. And so that is, you guys, is my story. My story of complete surrender and yes to God. All of us, you guys, all of us here in this church have, uh, are required, are called in some way to complete surrender. All of us are called to complete surrender, to say yes to God's plan in our life, whatever it is. We are to turn all of our fears, our worries, our concerns over to God and let God handle it. Let God handle it. To turn our fear 
into faith, great faith. Just like the Virgin Mary, never let your, let you, uh, let your fear stop you from doing God's will. Have great faith, say yes. Say yes always. I will come to you in the silence. I will lift you from all your fear. You will hear my voice. I claim you as my choice. Be still and know I am here. Do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me, I will lead you home. I love you and you are mine. Merry Christmas.